But the most insidious thing that Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden are trying to perpetrate, and Bernie and Elizabeth and Kamala, or what Kamala, or Kamala, 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 I don't know. That's David Perdue, a Republican incumbent senator from Georgia who looks and acts like a bad guy in a Disney Channel original movie. If that movie was about insider trading and the horrors of capitalism. As Purdue's Senate re-election bid goes to a runoff against Democrat John Ossoff in January 2021, let's take a look at the career of a lifelong CEO turned U.S. Senator who, instead of warning the American public about the coronavirus, capitalized on it. I'm Ed Helms, and this is the story of a fierce Trump ally who will make or break Republican control of the Senate. David Alfred Purdue Jr. was born in Macon, Georgia, to two school teachers in 1949. Purdue graduated from Georgia Tech, earning a degree in industrial engineering before getting a master's in operations management. In 1992, Purdue became senior vice president for Sara Lee, a food processing and distribution company which had expanded dramatically, acquiring companies like Haynes, Coach, and Playtex. On Purdue's watch, the bloated company began to restructure, moving American jobs to China. 9,900 jobs at Sara Lee were eliminated, and four of its plants in Georgia were shut down. As the company was thriving in Asia, Purdue prospered while his fellow Americans back home suffered. Purdue was asked in a 2005 deposition, can you describe your experience with outsourcing? Purdue replied, yeah, I spent most of my career doing that. In 1998, Purdue joined Reebok as a senior vice president and worked his way up to CEO in 2001. To his credit, Purdue revitalized the brand. Both sales and revenue grew. But it's also worth noting that 11-time All-Star Allen Iverson signed on to Reebok in 2001, so it's unclear who the real hero is. After a successful stint with Reebok, Purdue signed on as CEO of Pillowtex, a struggling textile manufacturer. Under Purdue's leadership, the company continued to have its problems, but Purdue didn't. He made $1.3 million the same year Pillowtex went under, leaving thousands of workers who were only making $11 or $12 an hour jobless. After overseeing success for him and failure for his workers, Purdue then went on to head up Dollar General, a chain of discount stores across the United States, and seemingly a place Purdue has never stepped foot in. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution wrote, Purdue helped engineer a leveraged buyout by KKR, a private equity giant. Tax records show Purdue took in $42 million from Dollar General in 2007 and 2008 after that deal. He had to pay a special golden parachute tax in 2008 on the money he was paid when he left the company. But the discount chain paid out $42 million in 2009 to settle several lawsuits alleging Purdue and other top executives earned big profits and gave stockholders $22 a share when it should have been worth more. Regardless of the failures and successes, Purdue always came out on top. Tax returns reviewed by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reveal that over 10 years, Purdue earned $55 million. In 2014, Purdue ran for Georgia's Senate seat and won. He said he was going to bring the perspective of the working person to Washington. It's unclear if Purdue was referring to the hundreds of working persons fired from Georgia-based Sara Lee plants he shut down years prior. In the Senate, Purdue has questioned the fact that there is a scientific consensus on global warming. When Trump appointed Scott Pruitt to the EPA, Purdue said, outside of eliminating the EPA altogether, Scott Pruitt is the next best thing. He also urged Trump to remove the U.S. from the Paris Climate Accord. It's clear why, though. Purdue has taken at least $184,000 from the oil and gas industries. On healthcare, Purdue has repeatedly claimed insurance should always cover pre-existing conditions. Health insurance should always cover pre-existing conditions for anyone, period. Words are great, and just like his president, Purdue knows some of the best ones. However, he doesn't actually believe them. PolitiFact rated his claim flat out false. As a lawmaker, Purdue has voted four times to repeal protections for pre existing conditions, which threatens the estimated 50 to 129 million non elderly Americans who have pre existing conditions. Jumping to January 2019, Purdue became the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Subcommittee on Sea Power. But something fishy was afoot. About a month prior to taking the post, Purdue conspicuously bought up about $290,000 worth of stock in BWX Technologies, a firm that has lucrative contracts with the U.S. Navy supplying nuclear components and fuel for submarines and aircraft carriers. By January 9th of 2020, Purdue had sold off the position for a hefty profit of up to about $50,000. Geez, if I didn't know any better, I might think that Purdue allegedly traded stocks based on inside information. 
And wouldn't you know it, this might not be the only instance. In January of 2020, as the coronavirus was about to take the U.S. and world by storm, Purdue and a handful of senators received a classified briefing on the spread of the virus from the Trump administration. After the meeting, Purdue sold off up to $825,000 in personal stocks. The same day, he bought stock in a company that supplies PPE. Meaning, instead of warning the American public about the obvious dangers that were to come, Purdue made sure to line his pockets prior to hundreds of thousands of American deaths. As of the publication of this video, Purdue has not apologized to his fellow Georgians or the rest of the American people for this craven financial transaction. In October of 2020, as Purdue launched a re-election campaign, his Democratic opponent, John Ossoff, called him out on this. Well, perhaps Senator Purdue would have been able to respond properly to the COVID-19 pandemic if you hadn't been fending off multiple federal investigations for insider trading. It's not just that you're a crook, Senator. It's that you're attacking the health of the people that you represent. Purdue's investment activity during his one term in the Senate has raised some eyebrows, to say the least. The New York Times reported that he made 2,596 trades in stocks, bonds, and funds during his first term in office, sometimes reporting 20 or more transactions in a single day. The Times found that Purdue's transactions accounted for nearly a third of all senators' trades reported in the past six years. In one of the most damning transactions, Purdue was tipped off by the CEO of Cardlytics, a financial company, where he once served on the board. After receiving a cryptic email about upcoming changes from the company's CEO, Purdue sold off more than $1 million worth of stock. The Times notes, after the company's stock price bottomed out in March at $29, Mr. Purdue bought back a substantial portion of the shares that he had sold. They are now trading at around $120 per share. If enriching himself by any means necessary isn't bad enough, Purdue has demonstrated he will do terrible things to get a vote. In a disgusting, bigoted effort to defeat Ossoff, Purdue launched an anti-Semitic ad against his young opponent, who is Jewish American. The ad shows an altered photo of Ossoff in which his nose appears to be longer and wider than it actually is. First, you were lengthening my nose in attack ads to remind everybody that I'm Jewish. Purdue's campaign called it an accident and removed the ad. Fast forward to November 3rd, 2020, and neither Ossoff nor Purdue received more than 50% of the vote, triggering an automatic runoff in January 2021 between the two. Georgia also has two other senatorial candidates heading for a runoff, Republican Kelly Loeffler, who also sold off a bunch of stock after closed door briefings about the coronavirus, and Democrat Raphael Warnock. These two races will decide which party controls the Senate and gains the power to shape Joe Biden's agenda. Purdue and Loeffler have since called for Georgia Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger's resignation, citing, without evidence, failures in the election. It's unclear if they're referring to their own campaigns or the democratic process. Whatever the case may be, control of the Senate hangs on two people who have shown they're willing to put their own bank accounts before the American people. Hey, thanks for watching Who Is? Did you know we have a podcast now too? On Who Is, the podcast, I'll dive deep into the fascinating lives of the people who run things, whose decisions impact every aspect of our lives. How did they get where they are today? And knowing that, what might they do next? From politicians to the ultra rich, to military contractors and monarchs and media moguls, I'll introduce you to the reporters and experts who know these real life world molders best sharp-eyed observers and confidants who observe our subjects as they make the decisions that define our everyday lives. To see more, hit the link or search Who Is on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. And for more of the video series you know and love, be sure to check out the Snapchat versions and our series playlists on YouTube and Facebook.